salutations friends we're here we're live in the investigation check and uh we have a fun first episode of the investigation tech 2.0 planned and ready to go uh, i'm garrett and this is my co-host chris hi chris hi hello there salutations uh to you and now uh as we get started uh let's roll uh roll the intro Fear not, Ranger. Now what do I do? Okay, this is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Video game cartridge. Your dungeon master has placed you in a dreadfully precarious position. You're playing the most phenomenal game ever created. I was so excited to do that. I was, I was, I was revving up. How long did that take me to make? I think five hours today. I sat there so, making uh, right the there. investigation check video intro. It took forever, but there it is. It's, it's there for you. So, uh, Chris, how's your week been? How, how's life treating you? Man, it's, it's been good. It's, it's been good. You know, uh, Fun, uh, fun fact. I had a, a an unarmored defense save today. It IRL. What, what happened? Um, I was running. Actually, this like just happened like an hour ago. I was I was running before this. Um, running as you do, outside, um, in this lovely Colorado heat, <clears throat> which is a joke. It's not hot here at all. I'm um, very envious of you. <laughs> I know all of you back in Texas are like you're running at five o'clock six o'clock in the evening yeah when it's literally like 110 like nope it's actually really nice here um but i was running as you do um and i literally connected with a b he he hit my my knuckle right here um straight oh. up stung me but because it was on my knuckle like nothing happened we like connected i like i was running like actually like punched him and he like stung me at the same time i felt it but it didn't hurt and it didn't go in because it hit me right on the bone. So I was like, an armor defense win. <laughs> I've you punched a bee running. That's that's what I got from this is that you literally punched a bee in the face. I, I like to see it as a uh, he didn't meet my my AC. Um, so sucks to suck. That's what happens when you uh, have bones <laughs> in your skin. I guess the the bees don't stand a chance. What good when, armor you have. When you're super bony, um, as I am, that is what happens. And we're very <laughs> proud of you. Congratulations for not being, uh, not being stung. Yeah, th thanks. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. How, how's your week, Gary? How's my week? Uh, my week's been okay. Uh, just kind of we're, we're gearing back up for uh, for round two of two twenty five. We got uh, a hero's journey two point That's out. We've got this new video format, video intro, all of that out for Investigation Check 2.0. Uh, so it's been it's been a busy week. It's been a good one. We're about to go back to work and all of that. So um, gearing up for that too. Um, but other than that, it's it's been it's been chill. It's been a good good week, and there will be more good days um, to come, yes. I suppose. So did you ever run? The uh that one shot by the way you said you were gonna get some players together to do your to do your one shot with, you know I I was trying but I need to either put more like time into it or try to connect more here in the Colorado area because apparently just putting it on a Facebook group hey what's somebody doing um like people liked it but like nobody commented or responded I don't know maybe I didn't put it in a good hook uh it basically just like hey who wants to play I'll, I'll play let's do this thing um and said so next time you know i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go in medias reus with the freaking paragraph and it's like this is the story now you're in it now you're playing boom roll your character let's go that's that's what i should do um so yeah but it didn't happen so it didn't happen and instead <clears throat> i uh, i totally played dragon age origins nice uh, which, solid solid game um but you know did my own rp <laughs> on the computer even where did you uh min max your character uh no 
No, see, that's the point of video games. You're supposed to min back. That way you don't have to roll. You can just uh, shoot things in the face uh, really well. I, I do shoot things in the face with with support spells and wait until all of my people do all the work. I just sit there and paralyze people. <laughs> now, I, now I'm just curious for my own, you know, curiosity. <laughs> where did you, uh, where'd you play Origins at? On like, your PC where? or like on your... Oh yeah, on my PC. That's, that's fun. Because I played like, it for like the, the first real time, boys. like two weeks. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I played it for the first time, and I played it for about 20 minutes before I uh, had to go somewhere, and I haven't picked it up since. Uh, but it's like, if WoW was a single-player game, almost, like the, the mechanics and everything hurt. But then it can also be like isometric, like it's uh, Neverwinter or something. It's super mm -hmm. confusing, and I never really played it back when it was the only one, and I have <laughs> definitely never played Inquisition or any of it. So I'm very unfamiliar uh, with so, Dragon Age as a whole? I have played Dragon Age 2 and Inquisition. Uh, Origins is by far the best. It was the first one, and it, it, it is the best. It is the best. It was made very well. It's it's absolutely finally made. It is, it is the best. But there's a new one coming out, right? Like, here pretty soon, I'm pretty sure. I mean, that's that's fine. I'd, I'd still prefer the, the OG, the Origins. Um... It's got better story, all those things. And it has that... You remember Fable? Where I like love you're... Fable. I forgot yeah. about Fable. Oh, yeah. What I loved about Fable was, like, all of your choices made a different path for the game. And that's yeah. that's what Dragon Age Origin captures really well. I didn't really get that feeling as well in the other ones. I didn't play them as much. I, I kind of got like, meh, I'd rather go play the, the OG. Yeah. Did you ever play... Um... Oh, what was I going to say? Uh, Mass Effect or uh, Knights of the Old Republic? I did not. I you never not. played Knights of the Old Republic? Mm -mm. Okay, so that's that's your homework for this week, is you have to go play <laughs> Knights of the Old Republic because it's fairly accessible nowadays. Um, but especially being the Star Wars nut that you are, uh, that is a game that you would thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy, I am sure. Mm. It is so okay. good. It's, uh, it's Bioware, and it's awesome. And it's not canon, but it used to be many years ago before Disney bought it out. But, you know, there's some there's some fun facts for you. Uh -oh. Um Thrasher is here. Uh, uh, I, no, that's that's Trasher from our table. That uh, is Creed. What's that? Uh, everyone knows I'm trouble. Everyone that is knows. you are trouble. Trouble incarnate, <laughs> I have to say. So, um, Going back to, to TTRPGs here, because that's kind of what, what, oh, what has brought oh, us together right. here, even though we've, you know, we had a little nice conversation. Um, do you have any fun table stories for, uh, for us today? You, you know, I, I do. I, I really enjoyed our session last week. <laughs> it was a pretty good session. Um, I, so with our DM, so we have a, a secondary campaign going on with one of our other friends, uh, Dylan, is DMing for the table. And it's kind of like a fresh campaign. We haven't had a lot of sessions in there. And i mean, be honest, I was not feeling my, my current character. I was like, I enjoy doing his voice, but I don't really want to, I don't want to play him anymore. Also because I was tired of doing the voice. <laughs> That's and, understandable. And half the time I would say something and y'all would be like, what? <laughs> I don't understand Scottish. <laughs> he had a very thick uh, accent. It it was very thick. It was it was very thick. Um, so I, I worked with the a DM and I was like, I want to I want to make a different character, and this is the narrative way that we should put him put him in there. And yourself, good old Father Mike, uh, was trying to foil my plans of dying. Was, <laughs> I really wanted you to live. See, we had chopped off goblin ears together. At that point, you know. I, I cared about you. We, we had a we had a special bond, um, but I was gonna die, dang it, because I needed to play the bugbear Dame Pooh. And <laughs> that you you did. Um, would you like to talk a little bit about that bugbear named Pooh? So I wanted to make a really lovable character um, that also brings in some controversy because part of the narrative right now is that we're facing a goblin 
horde thing that's causing problems. Um, so I chose a bugbear on purpose uh, for conflict reasons because um, bugbears and goblins are they're like cousins or whatever they're related they're all goblin folk can noids whatever um so like is he is he an enemy but then i would his personality be as lovable as possible so they're like he can't be a bad guy he's a he's a literally a soft teddy bear (laughs) here's my uh here's my theory i think that you are uh hoid just as a bugbear and there is a very (laughs) ravenous other side to this character that we are going to see uh at the worst opportune time just when it is the most inconvenient for this bugbear to uh, go ham uh, he's gonna i i you know spoilers um for you but i'm not gonna give anything away but i will say that uh Pooh does have his secrets and I guarantee you it's not what you think. That's good. Because uh, what <laughs> I think is we're all going to die, and he's going to have himself a tasty snack when when he gets <laughs> only, himself Only if you're made of out of honey. <laughs> uh, we, unfortunately, we're not made out of honey. Um, and then this coming Thursday, we, uh, we go back to Tenaria for the first time in uh, several months, I feel like. Uh, and it's going to be a fun time. I, I'm ready to play Trouble again, and the, the, the mistake that you have made there, DM, is you have given me too much time to prepare, so I made something ridiculous that I am going to do. <laughs> I'm very excited, because then we can just go off that and say, yep, Trouble is being Trouble, and that's just the way, that's just the way it goes. It's Trouble's Trouble, and we all succumb to whatever that is. <laughs> Join, join in in the chaos. Join me. <laughs> oh, oh, we do more often than not. I think whether that's voluntary or involuntary, uh, <laughs> it, it becomes chaos incarnate, and it's and that's what keeps the table fun. That's what keeps the table alive, <laughs> which is a uh, quite quite a treat. Um, so as we move uh, into D and D news, Chris, did you know? Uh, that there is a D and D movie in production currently, like right now. What post production? I guess I know it's crazy. This is this is breaking news, everybody. Um, I know the trailer dropped like three weeks ago, but this is breaking news as of this moment that there is a D and D movie. In fact, yes, that is currently out. We weren't doing the investigation <laughs> check three weeks ago, uh, so we get to talk about this now. Uh, I decided. Yes. Yes. So, the uh, the D and D movie is coming out. Uh, should be out next year sometime. Uh, what are your your first impressions of this of this film, the cinematic adventure? I am very excited. Uh, I love the fact that there is a D and D movie that's coming out, and it looks like it has a very high production value in it. So, because like they put a lot of effort into this, um, but I'm also upset at the same time. Not upset at the movie. Or anyone involved in the actual movie making process. I am upset about what I have seen about the online community, all the nitpicking. So if you're if you're nitpicking that druids can't turn into an owl bear, shoot it. Yes, they can. As of as of that moment, they they can. <laughs> it's now canon. <laughs> I you know I agree with you on that. So that that was going to be my next question, but you just you teed me up for it. Um, oh, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> see, yeah, I appreciate that. So. Um, we don't really know much about the story yet, right? Other than they helped somebody get something that they shouldn't have helped them get, and then chaos broke out, you know, per any good adventure. But we don't know, like, the plane of existence. We don't know um, really anything. Any of the more. We do know that there's quite a few uh, Faerun locations involved, like Waterdeep. Looks like Neverwinter is, is there. Um, looks like there's a little stint in the Underdark uh, or something of that nature. Um, but th- you're right. Like We don't know exactly. There's some sort of MacGuffin thing that they stole and that causes problems. And everybody is guessing that it's the Wizards of Thay or 
or whatever that's also involved. Uh, so that, that could be interesting. Um, myself personally, I'm looking for some, some laughs and a, a pretty good story. It doesn't have to be great. Um, you know, I get it's an, it's an action movie. Um, so, and some people might be like, you know, I don't want a, a Marvel movie that's reskinned as D and D, but myself personally, I, I do want a good Marvel movie that's reskinned as D and D. I totally, uh, 100% agree with that sentiment. I think, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is the best D and D movie that has ever existed. And now it actually gets to be D and D. And I think it's going to work. I really hope it does because, mm-hmm. um, for me, uh, I prefer my adventures a little more on the whimsical side. In case uh, you, as a as a player in scenario, couldn't tell, uh, I, I prefer my whimsy and not my not my dark fantasy and stuff. Uh, but that's just personal taste. So I think we're gonna get a lot of that in in this where it where it's fit. On the same note and on the same vein, I would like my Marvel and my Star Wars to be a little bit on the more serious side, uh, with a joke here or there. Um, I think that was a, a problem with the newest Thor movie. Personally, that's just a that's just a personal take. Um, mm-hmm. But it, it was too jokey when when things could have been more serious. But uh, in a D and D setting and in a D and D adventure like that, I think it definitely uh, has its place and should be where its place is. I guess. Yeah, I mean, there there should be a little bit of humor, especially in an action movie. Um, action-based movie, because um, it's it's hard to just be serious all the time. Like you need a little bit of a tonal balance of different types of emotion. So like sometimes it can be serious, sometimes it can be light, sometimes it can be funny, sometimes it can be um, scary, sometimes it can be sad. Um, and you know, like, but at the same time, like you just want like small waves of those, like small hints of flavor in there it's not the main dish you know yeah. like i want i want a good action movie i want it to be serious when it's serious uh, and I, I want it to be funny when it's funny uh, but i haven't seen the new thor movie so that's that's unfortunate that it's too jokey do you remember about 10 years ago when screaming goats were like peak comedy <clears throat> on the internet Yes, I they, still laugh at those. Yeah, well, you you might enjoy it because uh, Taika Waititi did not get the memo that that was ten years ago, and that is a running joke in in the movie. That is one of the many many jokes in the movie is the screaming goats. I'm sorry. Are you, are you saying that screaming goats aren't funny? I'm saying if it was 2012, and um, I was still in high school, and CS:GO had just come out. They would be pretty. They'd be pretty funny. I'm saying I think I think we've evolved as a as a species over time to the point where they they're funny, but they don't need to be peak. They're not the peak. We've we've moved on. We've we've moved up. That is my uh, myself argument. And, myself and and Trasher in chat uh, disagrees with you and still finds that screaming goats are peak cute comedy because it is always funny. You drop in a screaming goat. And it is instantly funny. Instantly now, funny. wouldn't it be great if Screaming Goats were in the D and D movie, just so I could eat my words? That way, the druid transforms into a goat and screams at them, and then they run away in fear. That will be a scene. If that's not a scene, then I'm I will be upset. I actually want to make a druid now for the table, and um, I'm going to pull that up on my phone and play that as a sound. Um, so. If you ever see that I'm rolling up a druid, it's not that that's your the screaming goat it's, druid. It's coming. It, it is. It is coming. <laughs> that that's fine. That it might as well happen. It <laughs> it's well. You are. Can you do that as as trouble? Is there a way you can finagle that? Given your uh, uh, arcane trickster. Uh, I'd have to get the polymorph spell or an item that could let me do some change. <laughs> Asher says no. <laughs> please no. <laughs> please no. Please stop. I mean, let, let me let me think on that. Yeah, you bit. probably could. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, I bet that sorry. there's a, 
I bet that there's a, a warlock eldritch invocation that I could, could take or or something, you know? There uh, probably is. At very least, you might be able to find a goat, and then he can be your uh, he can be your own personal Felix the raccoon, and he just follows you around just as a pet. It's a it's like a familiar. Ooh, I already know how I'm gonna do it. Thank you. I I've already got it. I already have everything I need. Are you gonna tell us? Or are you just gonna keep that to yourself? You're gonna get to experience that sometime in the future. It may or may not be tomorrow. <laughs> cool. I'm very excited. I'm pumped for it. Very sweet. Um, okay, so going back to the movie though, now that we've talked oh, about screaming right. goats, mm-hmm. right? Um, so in the movie, what what is the party composition? Chris Pine's a bard, and uh, Michelle Rodriguez is a barbarian. Is a barbarian. And then there's a sorcerer. Uh, there is a paladin. Um, and and I a druid. Think, and the druid. And I don't know if um, Hugh Grant's character is a part of the party, but they say that he is a rogue type character. Okay. Uh, which you never know about those rogues, like which side they're really on. Just they are. Know. They are trouble. I must say. They they are trouble indeed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here, I, I don't want to nitpick the movie because the movie's not out. But the when, when it cuts at the very end, when Michelle Rodriguez's character says he also plays the lute, he is playing the mandolin. I know this because I have a whole four-year degree in music. I play Irish trad. Therefore... Given, given my real world experience, one can know that this is not a loot. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. I'm gonna indulge you in in that that bit of that, that fun bit of trivia um, for just for just a hot second. I, w- I have a follow up question. That and this is this is this is high level. In all, in all seriousness, what's the difference musically? That is a great question, of which I would love to answer, because any excuse to, to geek out, is, <laughs> I'm here for it. So a mandolin, <laughs> uh, a mandolin is smaller and has four horses, eight strings total. So it's got two Gs, two Ds, two As, and two Qs. Uh, much like a violin. If you pluck the violin instead of boat it, you have a mandolin, right? A lute is a lot like a guitar, where it's got more strings, um, and depending on the era and depending on the culture, uh, depends on how it's tuned. But all of that to say, mandolins are tiny, and lutes are also huge, um, especially if you get into Baroque lutes. Uh, the it, it covers the entire room. You should look some of these up. If you look at Baroque lute, because they have these uh, these drone strings that they play, and these drone strings are huge and they're long, so the neck is like seven feet long, and I am not exaggerating, they are huge. Um, if I had it set up to where we could browse the internet, I would show you, and I'd pull it up. But uh, check it out, they're they're huge lutes, and that's a lute. He plays the mandolin, or a baby sitern, maybe like an octave mandolin. So. I heard a lot of words. Um, I un- I understood that a mandolin is is a tiny lute or a smaller lute. Yes, a smaller. Well, I guess technically it'd be a smaller cistern, but yes. Um, and a lute uh, is ca- like a old timey guitar. The guitar comes out of the lute tradition, which comes out of the oud tradition. It comes out of the Crusades um, in uh, in the in the ten the tenth the eleventh century, about ten ninety five. Uh, whenever people came back and they brought with them. Uh, Middle Eastern ideas of, of culture and, and love and stuff. Uh, it's not a loot. It's absolutely not. If it was a loot, if it was a loot, we would not be having this conversation. So, uh, Thrasher in chat said, so it's a loot. Absolutely not. It is not a loot. Um, and by the way, uh, Kelly from Homebrew Coffee is here. Hi, Kelly. Salutations hey. uh, to you, and thanks for, thanks for tuning in um, to this musicological discussion as we discuss the D&D movie. It's not a loot. The thing's not a loot. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. I will I will okay. die on this soapbox. Dang it. Okay. Okay. 
that, so that's that's that that's my insightful response. Okay. <laughs> I I care a lot more about what that instrument is called um, than I do about the druid turning into an owlbear by a lot. But also, yeah. it could just be that he does play the lute and he had a lute, and then they just cut to him doing that little jump strum thing that he did, <laughs> which is possible. What 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 if it is a loot, but he casts the reduce spell on it? Then I will I will eat my words like a like a aged soup. <laughs> if that is a scene, yes, <laughs> yeah, like a sweaty shoe, It'd be gross. The but things I, I have recently learned in D and D is that uh, magic literally fixes everything it, you, you, just, you just have a problem you, you just magic it if you, if you still have the problem you just didn't magic it right uh, exactly or just you know roll roll better who needs magic weapons when you just can roll better you know that's that's yeah, what i'm saying ex exactly as as my dm likes to say you sucks get good yeah get good that's all you have to do just get good <laughs> if you get good then all of your problems are for nothing and they all go away all you gotta do is get good yeah, that that literally fixes everything. If you if you would just get good, uh, and uh, I have not figured out how to do that yet, I will figure that out <laughs> in time. When I figure that out, I will let you know. Because I shoot him in the head does not uh, always work as as the uh, as the combat uh, when you're a gunslinger. Come to find out, but um, yeah, as as Trasher says, no wonder why fighters can't solve problems. That's exactly why. Um, uh, you weren't able to solve it by shooting him in the head because because you weren't magicking it. Now, That's if you were true. shooting with a spell in the head, that would probably work like fireball. If you would just fireball, because fireball is the answer. Just fireball. Fireball, fireball is uh, fireball's never the question. It's always the answer. <laughs> you see, always, always. Um. um so g going back to, to the to the movie though. Um, now that we've okay. we've learned about the instruments, we've learned you know about that. I did not know it was in Forgotten Realms. So that's exciting to know. Um, I guess I hadn't yes. really looked it up at all or thought to that is, until we sat here. That is confirmed. Um, they they did confirm some of the the city locations. Um, I would like to see some Baldur's Gate personally. I I would love it if they did a Baldur's Gate and they went to the Elf Song Tavern and that song was still playing. I would nerd so hard I'd be like, "Oh my god, you're doing the thing," um, and it would be it would be so great. Uh, um, as yeah. a side tangent, based on what you just said about the Elf Song Tavern in Dark Alliance, it starts in the Elf Song Tavern, and there's the song, right? That's PlayStation Two action RPG. Now, I don't know personally because I never played Baldur's Gate one or two or really any of those. But is there another video game or? cinematic rendition that's canon of the elf song tavern that's not in gate of avernus because that's a book i mean you're you're asking me a video game question and i have okay, well, that's played, true. i have played three video games in my life um, i've seen three movies I, in my life so together <laughs> we've done six things i i have played skyrim dragon age and 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 the the one I just said, Baldur's Gate. <laughs> if you are in chat and you're vibing with us, um, let us know if you know. It has the Elf Song Tavern and that beautiful song ever been seen, um, outside of Dark Alliance? Because inquiring yeah. minds uh, want to know. Yeah, Crasher has I no would, recollection. I would like to know as well. That that's a that's a great question for chat. Um, overall, uh, the movie I'm. I'm really excited for it. Uh, I, I just want people to to back off with thinking that it needs to follow all of the the, the rules as written um, or rules as intended, whatever the argument is, because I doubt that there is a single table that follows rules as written 100% of the time. And if Even if they is, think they do. Even if they think they do, right. Even if they think they do, because we'll, we'll talk about that in the next segment. I have a, I have a nice roll-in for that now. Yeah, um, so so let's move on to that next segment. Um, to If you're if you're ready, uh, my closing thoughts on this are I'm, yeah. I'm super optimistic about the movie. The cast seems pretty cool, um, and it is definitely D&D. &D. So not, and I'm not excited because it's D&D, &D, but I feel like they finally hit home kind of what D&D &D means to a lot of people. 
um, and we're going to get that flavor uh, in a cinematic experience. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because um, it, it has all the D&D flavors just from, just from the trailer. Like, what a D&D table with campaign experience, like kind of what I visualize already. It's kind of there. But, yeah, so rules is written. Um, that's an that's a interesting, interesting topic um, because there's so many. There's so many rules is written. Uh, I I learned a new thing um, this week, and I want to know how you would you would DM this because I'm going to test your rules as written knowledge here, Mr. DM. Are you ready? No, but let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, this is a test. We're we're investigating uh, Garrett's uh, DM skills. Roll investigation yes. for me. <laughs> Rolling an investigation check on the investigation check. Here we go. Um. You, as the DM, have some cool little monsters here. They're all stealthy. The party is approaching. They have not seen your stealthy monsters here. And then you want to unleash the trap and attack them. Surprise! How do you run the surprise, DM? So this is the surprise question. I think there is a lot of different ways you could do it, but what is written? Um, now, there is not a surprise round. Surprise round does not exist, but a lot of people rule it that way. Um, if it was up to me, I would probably rule the surprise round. But rules as written, um, I don't remember exactly. <laughs> But I, I agree with Thrasher's sentiments in chat that if I roll, it's a crit fail. So no matter what I roll, uh, it won't happen. But um, given that you asked this question, I feel like you know the answer. Would you like to enlighten us on, on the, I, the the canon response? I, I, I would like to enlighten you. Rules is written. Um, what you as the DM should do is roll a stealth check for your monsters trying to surprise said party um, versus their passive perception and any of your creatures that succeeded and you as a DM you can just say that they succeeded because you decided that's that's totally cool um, I mean you can give them triple advantage if you just really just want to make a, a, a you know, success on your roll that's that's cool too um, but uh, your creatures that have done so have now surprised the other creatures, the, the, the party members who failed uh, that passive versus stealth check, right? And the surprise is not a round. It is not a round of combat. Surprise is a condition. Everyone still rolls initiative right there before the surprise attack happens. Um, but, of course, your... Um, and it doesn't affect the order of initiative either. Your Creatures who are doing the surprising can be very last in the initiative order. But what happens is when people uh, come up to their turn, if they're surprised, they cannot take an action or a reaction for this round. They are in the surprise condition. Um, and then it goes to, and of course, if you have like the alert feat where you can't be surprised, you say, no, nah, I'm still doing my turn because I can't be surprised, sucker. Uh, so you do what you want. Um, but then, of course, you get to your, your monster's turn, who, who uh, made their surprise, and they, they get to do their turn as normal. But no action, no reaction is, is the big part of it, but your initiative order has already been decided. Um, so what tends to happen a lot is the DM is just like, I roll to attack, and I do my attack thing, and now we're going to roll initiative when I, when I finish rolling my attacks. Um, the reason why this is really important is, uh, as the rules is written, the, the intention behind it is to make sure that you still have a set order of events, so you don't have chaos at your table, where everybody's like, well, I want to do this, and I'm going to do this, I'm off cast fireball, because screw you, um, <laughs> you know, or people are like, well, you triggered my polearm master feat, and I get a opportunity attack against you, and you as the DM get to say, no, you don't, because you're surprised, you don't get a reaction. Um, so, no, Trasher, it is not a surprise round. It is it is a round of combat where you suffer the surprise condition. 
but that it, is... it also it also brings credence to the alert feet because that that gives the the hey dm nope i can't be surprised so i still get my turn oh well, looky there so um for those of you out there that are like gee whiz i wish i knew how surprise work uh now now you do right so what's the story behind that because you said you just learned this recently did you just read it or did something happen um i i watch a lot of youtube things and i saw it on the youtubes um shout out to taking 20 on youtube they're they're super popular and they've got lots of lots of bollards um they're really cool I don't think I've ever listened to or watched Taken 20. I, I do watch a lot of Constructed Chaos, though. He's my boy. I, I do love a good Constructed Chaos. I, I like to watch his stuff, too. It's pretty sweet. Um, so there you go. So it's a condition. That means um, that you can't take your action unless you can because of some reason. Unless you can because because reasons <laughs> well there you go okay so now speaking of uh dm rulings and, and rules is written and stuff um good old chris over here has been making characters uh just to learn the game more to learn the game better, uh, more better. which more better which is admirable yes. um and he was like hey we should talk about this on the show and I said, absolutely, we should talk about this on the show. Um, so, will you will you tell us uh, what your build and character that you were uh, that you've been making is? Oh, absolutely. So, um, as as a nerd boy myself, one of the the nerd things that I love is is good old Sherlock Holmes story. Um, uh, I love books. I. I probably should have set up my, a book collection. I have the whole the, the fancy book collection binding thing. It's really cool. But uh, yeah, um, I love the TV show, uh, the BBC one. That's 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 the best uh, televised Sherlock Holmes, in, in my opinion. I have to uh, agree. That show is fantastic. As a side note, just speaking of Victorian, you know, literature and whatever. Uh, did you watch the Dracula show that they did on Netflix? There's a Dracula show. On so I'll take that as a no. It's the same guys at BBC, but they, they were like, it's a Netflix thing. Um, and it's okay. done the same way where each episode's like an hour and whatever. Um, and it's Dracula. And it's like uh, fairly close to to uh, the book in some regards. But the show's a fantastic mm -hmm. show. Anyway, going back to Sherlock. That is that is amazing. I'm going to check that out. Great, yeah, re you, great you reputation. Uh, yeah, chat, y'all should, should do that too. Um, so... Uh, and RDJ, Robert Downey Jr.'s version in the movies, is fine. I just feel like it's not the same Holmesy flavor because he, he, he does too much fighting. He, he's too good at fighting. It's cool in a movie. It is very cool, but it is, at the same time, not, not Sherlock Holmes. What about the Will Ferrell rendition of Sherlock Holmes from the hit movie uh, Holmes and Watson? I have never seen this, but it offends me because I don't like Will Ferrell, and the fact that he would dare play Sherlock Holmes um, oh. makes me want to buy that movie as a VHS and then slam it with a hammer. If you would <laughs> like to know this, this, game, this movie came out in 2018, not to devi deviate from the topic at hand, which is your build of the character, but I think you need to watch this to make sure your build um, absolutely uh, still holds up in the tradition that you want because it has a roaring 10% on Rotten Tomatoes, a 24% on Metacritic and a 3.9 out of 10 on IMDb. Ooh, ooh, so such stark raving critics. They're so excited to watch that garbage. Yeah, it did um, not do well. Uh, clearly, I, I clearly I could have told them that was a bad idea from the beginning. Um, yeah, but yes, uh, and, and John C. Riley is um, is Watson, by the way. Of so. course, of course, he is. Um, you know the the messed up thing is that John C. Riley would actually be a great Inspector Lestrade um, because he gives off that doofus kind of vibe uh, really well uh, in his movies. He he does it really good. Um, but but now he was Holmes. 
No, I'm that, sorry. He was uh, he was Watson. He was Watson. That that's that's so terrible. Jude Law is is the best Watson that I that I've seen. Um, I I take Jude Law's Watson and baloney cucumber pants as uh, as Sherlock Holmes um, every day. That's that's perfect right there. Anyway, back to the build. The D and D things. This D&D is D and D. This is a TTTRBG podcast, not some crap movie review. Um, uh, that is fair and true. <laughs> um, I kid, I kid. Um, so I, I wanted to, to bring in some of the flavors of a good Sherlock Holmes to, to D&D. Um, and some things about Sherlock Holmes. Everybody knows he's, he's super smart, super investigative. He's, he's really good at figuring stuff out, detective, all those things. Um, but some smaller bits of flavor on Sherlock Holmes is that he was also a very big... Um, uh, advocate for dispelling the paranormal because um, uh, charlatans, trickery, people passing off magic as real kind of thing was a very big thing um, in that time period of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle um, and uh, that's why uh, Holmes like had a lot of those demystifying what seems to be magic uh, in a lot of his things like Hounds of Baskerville uh, was one of those uh, it's a fantastic story, um, but kind of demystifying magic. So I don't want him to use a lot of magic, like magic, magic, but more of like a little bit of things that seem like just somebody's being really creative with their resources. Um, and and of course we want the um, you see, but you do not observe, uh, you know, situation going down. So I made a build, and of course I, I took it to level 20 because uh, this build is very feet heavy. Like you, you need the feats. The feats are what makes this build uh, good. And I, I will say right now, spoiler alert everybody, um, Sherlock Holmes, the, the build that I made is not, uh, is not a min-maxing situation. He is not gonna try and do all the damage in the world. That is, that is not what he does. Um, but he's really good at investigating and seeing stuff. Um, so the first breakdown in that level 20, those 20 levels, I took 12 levels, uh, to start off as a rogue and made the roguish archetype for mastermind. Um, I thought about, uh, the inquisitive cause you would think inquisitive uh, he gets some bonuses to perceptions and on the things and inquisitive just sounds like Sherlock Holmes, but I I like the flavor of mastermind more better because the mastermind has abilities to help his allies be more effective at things. So you can use help as a bonus action and not just for people who are within five feet, you can use it for your allies who are within 30 feet. Um, so imagine, you know, Sherlock calling out, it's like, hey, Watson, you should do this thing, like in the middle of battle, like I would role play that as my help, like uh, call out to, to Rudius, Tudius, Shudius, don't shoot it in the head, shoot it in the leg. That's more effective, you twit. Um, something like that, I don't know. Um, and I would, I would count that as my, as my help to give him advantage uh, or something of that nature. Um, and the, and at the end of the day, Holmes is definitely a rogue. Uh, like, you need the skills. Got to grab things like investigation, perception, um, deception, performance, absolutely, uh, things of that nature. But not persuasion. Holmes is not good at the the charismas. Um, he, he's he's not a charismatic boy. Uh, I don't I don't know if I've seen that, but he's he's not. Um, but sleight of hand, insight, history, of course. Uh, you gotta grab some expertise on a lot of these skills. Um, and um, you get all sorts of lovely bonuses to have more. Uh, skill proficient or like tool proficiencies so he gets like the disguise kit forgery kit um other things of that nature um and additional languages so a lot of good things with 
the mastermind. And this one right over here really stood out to me. Uh, the insightful manipulator. If you spend at least one minute observing or interacting with another creature outside of combat, you can learn whether it is your equal, superior, or inferior in any of the two of its, you know, uh, score uh, ability scores or class levels, things like that. Um, so it really goes into that with that. I'm just going to go observe the enemy and see what we're up against. Um, just bringing that insight. Uh, to the table, I think has a very, very, very homesy flavor. And then for the last eight levels, uh, I went Artificer. Um, he's really good with tools. He experiments a lot. He's kind of a tinker. He has all sorts of random research and things of that nature. Um, Got to have some uh, lovely Artificer, Artificer infusions as well. Um, and I went for the Battlesmith. Uh, primarily because what I'm looking for here from the Battlesmith is the Battle Ready uh, class feature where you gain um, the ability to use your Intelligence modifier rather than Strength or Dexterity for your attack and damage rolls. Um, and Holmes is a smart attacker. He's the, he's the intelligent guy that's going to strike. Um, he's not the most uh, dexterous or the strongest guy out there. That's not that's not how he wins a fight. He doesn't want to fight to begin with, um, but he's going to outwit somebody. So having that flavor in there, plus you get a steel defender little buddy as a battlesmith. And I just love the idea of having a steel defender that you could make that is Watson, and you just boss Watson around all of the time as your, your little companion buddy. <laughs> Um, or you could make a different one and make it actual stupid and call it Inspector Lestrade. Um, I think that's absolutely fantastic as well. You, just, you can have so much uh, good times with that uh, all in your own. Um, and the last artificer thing that I really love here is the flash of genius. Uh, when you are another creature uh, making a ability check or saving throw, you can use your reaction to add a plus five to the roll. Um, and again, kind of going back with that mastermind, being able to help as a bonus action kind of idea. It's like, not only can I help you with your attacks, giving you an advantage, but as the artificer, I can also help you out with an ability check or a saving throw um, in a really unique way. Um, and of course, you can say something very homesy to them, um, something very elementary that they did not themselves see. Uh, and that's uh, all sorts of fun things and the now I'll go into the feats uh, there's a lot of and I said like this is a very feat heavy build um, so I made him a variant human so we can get a, an extra feat started off with keen mind of course so you can remember everything you gotta have that, that photographic memory if you're gonna play a Holmes character I, I think that's an absolute need um and of course, the observant feet, uh, where you can, uh, you know, read lips, see what they're what they're saying. You can add a plus five to your passive perception and passive investigation score. Uh, skill expert to increase those skills a little bit more. Uh, of course, prodigy uh, needed more skill proficiencies, more uh, uh, tool proficiencies. Uh, add another uh, language. Uh, things of that nature. Skilled, uh, again, we're building more skills. Holmes is a very uh, diverse set of abilities and skills. Um, his depth of knowledge is absolutely crazy, so he should be good at a lot of things. Um, and then the last one is actor, uh, where you know you can have advantage on deceptive deception and performance checks when you're trying to uh, pass off as a different person. You can mimic speech. Uh, that you've heard things of that nature, uh, which he does on a regular basis, of course. Um, so a lot of a lot of good homes features in there, um, and then of course, as an artificer, we'll have spells and some inventory that I gave him as well. Um, but questions so far? What do you think so far? I really like this build. I think this is. Um... For me personally, uh, super cool, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I prefer builds that are flavorful as opposed to builds that are mid-maxi. 
Uh, so if you are trying to play Sherlock Holmes, uh, I think this is it, you know? Um, and like you said, it's not min max. He's not looking to do a lot of damage, but everything that you pick, uh, I feel like it absolutely reflects Sherlock Holmes. Uh, not that I am a Holmes scholar by any <laughs> stretch of the imagination, but knowing what I know about the BBC series and whatnot, the one documentary I watched in high school when the English teacher wasn't there, uh, I it's good. Like, this is solid. How long did it take you to do this and to, like, read through everything and, and get it just right? So I, I, I started working on this a few weeks ago, uh, just here and there. Uh, I, when I'm walking my dogs each day, uh, as we do, it takes about, you know, 20 ish minutes or so. Um, that's what I do while I'm walking the dogs. I'm, I'm just letting them sniff around, do their thing, uh, all that good stuff. Um, and I'm just sitting there just playing around on D and D beyond, just making a character on my phone or looking at something. Uh, just, just cause I'm curious. Just, I just want to know more about the game. Um, but yeah, like there, he's not, he's not going to do a lot of damage. Um, absolutely not. And I want to play this character so bad, just, just for the, all the acting. The problem is that he's level 20. So it's like not a lot of situations where he's going to just pop in and be all good by the DM. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. He, maybe a DM would run him as like a, uh, as an NPC or something. That way they have say over what he can and can't do. So maybe that's how you need to do it. Maybe you need to find a group to DM. Uh, and but then, you know, he's going to steal the spotlight from the players. But maybe that's okay. Maybe they're like his assistants. Maybe they're brought in to assist him. And that's that what assistants a, do, I guess. You know, A fun story all of its own. Um, you know, and I, I won't go too much over, like, all the items and spells and things that he, he has. But, again, like, the whole flavor is, like, how can he be more skilled? How can I get some advantages on, like, perception, investigation, things like that? But um, my favorite thing about this that makes me laugh so much is that his passive perception is 37. Yeah, that is uh, ridiculous. The best passive investigation is 32. Passive Wisdom Insight is 27. And that's absolutely insane. And with reliable talent, uh, even if I had to roll for a perception check, I could not possibly roll below a 27. And I'm rolling those at advantage anyway. So it's going to be better than that. <laughs> that is... Uh... That's insane. Mm -hmm. Like this... It... it all of his skills are really good. He knows 11 languages. Uh, he has a ton of skill proficiencies and things like that. And primarily the way I would run him in combat um, is I would kind of have him sitting in the back and organizing tactics. Like you should go here, giving people advantage here, using um, his cantrip guidance as his regular action to give people a, a further bonus on their roles. So I'm giving you advantage and a, a, an extra die roll uh, on top of that. Just a lot of a lot of fun things, or maybe dropping in a snare to trap somebody. Uh, th this is a character that you want to play to outsmart your enemies, not to to beat down with a sword or with with fireball, because um, he he definitely does does not have that. <laughs> so let me ask you this question: What kind of campaign would he do super well in if? Uh, if the DM was like, hey, I want to run X, Y, and Z, and the first thing that came to mind was like, Sherlock Holmes would do really well. In some type of, uh, I mean, obviously like a mystery campaign where you're having to to explore and, and figure out what's going on. So like an urban society, uh, uh, situation would be really good uh, for this character. Um, and some other situations would would be maybe where you're you're working a political intrigue um trying to figure out who's stabbing who in the back and you know what's uh who's who's putting the 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 pressure here or there and how's all of these things unfolding um he's not great at social interactions because he does he's not he's not charismatic um so that's that's a part of holmes's flaws he has an eight in charisma um <laughs> so 
he, uh, he's, he's not going to do really well on, on those charisma rolls, uh, except for deception, because Holmes is a good liar. Um, but he's not good at, at a lot of other things. Um, he's not going to, he's not going to be the guy that's like, Hey, let's, let's go fight Tiamat or, um, uh, the, the monstrosity that is behold him at, um, uh, that, that thing's just t- so stupid. Um, yeah, we need to run him. Of, oh, he, he, I don't know about that. I mean, I have, I have a character for that and that I, I might share that another time, but it's also stupid. Talk about the complete opposite damage output wise. Now, there is a variant to this Holmes build that you could make where he is a little bit more combat capable himself, where he can do a little bit more damage output. Um, so it depends on the, the Holmesy flavor that you're looking for here. Um, and this is a this is a conversation I had with Dragon, um, and, and this was his take on it. Um, he recommended a uh, inquisitive rogue, which I, I kind of mentioned before, there's a lot of benefits that inquisitive rogue brings, and instead of artificer, take a dip into fighter to be a battle master, uh, to where you can use a lot of those battle master maneuvers to manipulate the battlefield. So it still kind of gives that same flavor where you're using tactics to to organize how the flow of battle goes. Um, but you yourself can also do a bit more damage because I mean you're you're a fighter. You have all those millions of attacks that they do, and of course you're adding your your rogue sneak attack damage on top of that as well. So uh, some some good benefits. Um, and after you've taken a dip into battle master, add some levels of the open hand monk uh, because uh, Holmes even in the the book version this wasn't just a, 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 a rowdy, uh, Robert Downey Jr. thing uh, Holmes is a professional boxer um, so he is good at hand to hand combat so you could bring that flavor in if you really wanted to lean into that so that there there are some more combat options there if you wanted to him to be a little bit more effective in the battlefield and uh, or you, you feel like you're not comfortable having a, a version where you have to outwit uh, the situation every time because that that can be a little intimidating as the player. It's like I, I have to play a smart character really smart. I can't just roll and say I'm smart. <laughs> yeah, how do you, you play a play smart, smart character when you're dumb? Asking for a friend, uh, not me. That's for sure. Um, you ask a smart friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. I'll tell my friend to just ask someone smarter. <laughs> That, that would that's, not be that's me. That's point. crazy. I don't know. This friend needed to know, not me. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's a lot of fun things that you could do with a with a Sherlock Holmes at the table. Um, it it could definitely uh, cause your DM some headaches. Like if they've got some puzzles or or if they're trying to bring a surprise attack in, you're gonna be like, you're gonna have to beat my 37 passive perception because I decided I don't want to be surprised. I also personally can't because I have the alert feet. So. Sucks to suck. Get good. <laughs> the DM would have to indeed get good. But that is, you know, also if they want you to uh, to fail or whatever, you know. Uh, so uh, hopefully they want you to succeed. Hopefully the DM is not trying to beat you in combat because uh, that would be unfortunate. Trying to be, be cooperative and not, uh, not the worst. But um, I guess we can, we should talk about DM styles next time. And like, what is a DM, and what should they do? Like, what is expected? That that's that's a good idea. Um, and I have I have one last thing that I just thought of on this build because I thought this would be hilarious to do. I I want to know if you as the DM would allow this. Shoot. So in this build, as the artificer battlesmith, you can have your little your little buddy, your companion, your steel defender. And what I think would be hilarious is if I were to use the spell Catapult on my Steel Defender to launch him at literally anything. Um, out a window, at an enemy, um, into the neighbor's yard. Uh, I don't know, into the moat. Something, I don't know. There, there, there's a lot of options there. Technically, the Catapult says it has to be one object weighing one to five pounds. And I'm 
it doesn't say specifically how heavy the steel defender is. But I'm a bet that it is because it is made of steel. It is it is going to be more than five pounds. I think I I would allow that, and, and my rationale would be he's he's small. If he is a tiny tiny like a little uh, like a little robot, like the size of a of a raccoon or uh, any small mammal, I would allow that. Now, if he is uh, the size of a giant Goliath, probably <laughs> not. That might be huge. If he's the Iron Giant uh, from the hit movie, The Iron Giants, probably probably would say uh, no. Or I would have you roll for it, and then it wouldn't Roll happen. for it? Roll, hmm. to, uh, roll for Catapult, and then it roll, wouldn't happen. Roll for Catapult? What, what, would I, what would I roll there, DM? Uh, you would roll a strength check, but not on yourself. You'd roll it for your catapult. My, my. Okay. Very, and very then, interesting. Uh, and then you would fail. And, oh. and then I'd say, unfortunately, oh. uh, you're trying to fling the Iron Giant from the WB movie, <laughs> The Iron Giants. And uh, it was Excellent. unsuccessful. The movie was That's... so good. That is that is unfortunate. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at the the stat block it gives here in in D and D Beyond on it, and there is there is not a weight, uh, or even a weight range on here. So is there a size? Uh, no, it it just says you your tinkering has borne a faithful companion, a steel defender. It is friendly to you. Basic bands. Um. I would also say for flavor purposes, it probably doesn't have to be steel. Like, if the Artificer wanted to be, um, like Yasvin, uh, from Story Elus, if he, yeah, if he wanted yeah. to make a, uh, make a puppet a out of wood or boy. something, yeah, then that would totally be fine, too. Uh, oh, and it just kind of depends on your, depends on your DM and how they would rule that, but that's how I would rule it. I just think it would be funny. Um, it, it doesn't even have to do damage or anything like that. I, that's not really what I'm worried about. Um, I just picture... You know R two D two when he just like flies through the thing and he does a <laughs> situation. That's exactly what what I'm wanting this to happen as. But yeah. as he's like, yeah, I would let Watson. that happen just for that to happen. <laughs> and there he goes. I love the fact that Watson and uh, the Inspector are the Steel Defenders. They are the they're not people uh, from his past. They are his constructs, and that makes me so happy. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh... Yeah, next time we will have to talk about some some DM styles. Uh, you know, we because even even the two of us like we we tend to have a lot of overlap, but we we still differ a, a little bit, a little bit. That is true. Um, uh, but yeah, we, I we, we do DM very much. Overlap. I DM when I can. Um, so uh, we were gonna do monster of the week, but we can do that briefly as we're going on about an hour and ten minutes now. Uh, this is my favorite monster of all time. If you've ever tuned into 225 or have sat at my table, uh, you will know, uh, the in-person table, you will know that my favorite creature is undoubtedly, with, with every fiber of my being, uh, the Kuatua, the fish people, who can summon gods because they think they exist. That is the coolest thing in the world, and they are not high level, and why anybody would run a goblin instead of a Kuatua blows my mind, and... Uh, it hurts my feelings. I firmly believe that they are the superior version. Now, I get that maybe you're in a forest, and why would the fish be in the forest? But also, why would the fish be in the forest? That's your job as the DM to figure that out. Why are they in the forest, away from home? It is It is a bit fishy. Ho oh, ho, that was a good one. Um, but now, uh, it, it's, a, it's a creature I don't see played too often. And it it definitely be. deserves deserve some more now because I, I i just have to drop this nugget because they, the people need to know if if your dm decides that you're you're gonna have to fight all these kuatoa and they're they're trying to do the whole god thing you as the player should tell your dm no i decided that that's not gonna happen because i am the new god and these kuatoa need to believe that so you're going to use a series of cantrips to make them believe that. Yes, I said cantrips. And I'm referencing a very specific situation that happened at our table. Yeah. That I almost got away with. You did. <laughs> but those, it's those Everwarm cookies. They'll get you every time, I'm telling you. 
I, but, I was doing so good, and then, and then I failed with the cookies. But, man, if, if, I, if I could have made that happen, bestow upon me the godly powers, the Kowatoa. It is, it is I. I am the one you have been looking for. I, you know, thinking back and being like, gee whiz, what should I have done? I probably should have let you get away with it. <laughs> Maybe it was a little unfair that I didn't. Maybe it was a little railroady that I didn't, and yeah, I apologize no, for that. No, you, but... you, you definitely should have tried to resist that, because at, at the end of the day, I, I was trying to get Godhood with a couple of cantrips. <laughs> well, when you say it like that, uh, yeah. Well, you know, I don't know. They, uh, It's an interesting world scenario, but um, maybe maybe we'll see them again. Maybe we'll see those fish people. Maybe they're not all, all forgotten about. Uh, or maybe they are. Maybe they're dead aft. Who knows? Um, so there you go. Moral of the story. Uh, run the Kuwato in your games because they are full of flavor and not just like smoked salmon. They are uh, they are full of, of lore flavor as well. Um, so with that being said, is, uh, do you have any closing thoughts as we close out episode one of the investigation check 2.0? Uh, my closing thought is that the intro video is amazing. I want to uh, watch the intro again. Can we watch the intro again? We, we should watch the, watch the intro again. It was so good. We're going to watch the intro. Job on this. So, hey, thank you. It only took me as long as it took me. So, uh, bear with us. <laughs> We're going to watch the intro again. Here it goes. I'm watching it. Fear not, Ranger. Now what do I do? Okay, this is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Video game cartridge. Trial edition. Of, uh, Your dungeon master has placed you in a dreadfully precarious position. You're playing the most phenomenal game ever created. People should definitely just just chat up Garrett and be like, oh my god, it's so good. It's like it's like super professional. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I I'm pretty I'm pretty proud of that. I worked my butt off. Um and uh showed it to a couple people before we went live and everybody thought it was cool. It makes me feel good about myself. But um, yeah, it was super neat. Now I need one to leave. We need a, a leaving outro. Mm -hmm. And just as a side note, this has nothing to do with anything, but um, you ever been to an Alamo Draft House? I love Alamo Draft House. They are I too amazing. love Alamo Draft House. I think we need the uh, the going live, which is this button right here. Uh, we are looking at it currently. This is it. Uh, I think we need to do something in the vein of Alamo Draft House where it's like a slideshow mm -hmm. of clips and fun trivia and skits and stuff mm -hmm. until it goes live with the countdown and the thing. But that's a that's a pro video project for another time. Mm -hmm. um, things, but all things of, to come. Things to come. This is only episode one. We're gonna get our we're gonna get our feet underneath us. We're gonna get a, a solid structure of, of segments and we'll get some guests. It'll be awesome. Um, yes. and all of that to say uh, I think this is uh, is it for episode one? Do you want to close us out, or should should I close? Us yes, out I, I I will close us out. Close us I out. I know, right? You you, you, you can do time. whatever you want. You can do close us out how oh, you wish. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do the outro, man. I I okay. got it. Hey, as, as Garrett would do, he stares longingly into the camera. Hey, adventures. Go. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be at your back. May all your rolls be twenties, something like that. Your uh -huh. DMs be gentle. And you have a great freaking time at your table. There you go. We'll see you next time. And we'll see you next time. Um, see y'all. We're going to go raid, and uh, we'll see y'all later. Raid. Have a lovely time.